Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will be covering the fundamentals of how to eat to maximize muscle growth and reduce body fat. First and foremost, we need to understand exactly what body composition is. So body composition essentially refers to what your body is made of. While we have skin, bone, blood vessels and organs that make up a proportion of our body, body composition usually refers to the amount of muscle mass and body fat that an individual has. Generally speaking, most individuals want to increase the amount of muscle they have and decrease the amount of body fat they have. So for this video, we will be discussing nutritional interventions that have the goal of increasing muscle mass and decreasing body fat. Now we need to understand what the role of nutrition is for enhancing body composition. Nutrition is not an adaptation to training. This means that we don't grow muscle from eating a certain way. We grow muscle as an adaptation to effective training. So nutritional interventions are a way of assisting muscle growth. It is not what causes muscle growth. So if we don't have an effective training regime in the first place, then nutritional interventions aren't going to enhance muscle mass alone. However, when we look at fat loss, this is a direct result of nutrition and not an adaptation from training. So for fat loss, training is a method to assist fat loss, but doesn't cause it. So the bottom line is that training and nutrition need to be performed in conjunction with one another for the best body composition results. Now we can get into the details of how to eat to enhance body composition. The first and most important consideration for any nutritional intervention is calories. Calories are essentially a unit of quantifying energy. To understand this, let's use the example of measuring weight. To quantify how much something weighs, we use either kilograms, pounds or stones, but they are all measuring the same thing, just in different units. In the same way, calories are just a unit of measuring energy. Energy is something that is required by humans for all tasks that we do. Our body requires energy to move and for essential functions like breathing and circulating blood. We burn a certain amount of calories each day, and if we eat more than this, we will gain weight, and if we eat less than this, we will lose weight. There are multiple ways that calories are expended each day. The majority of energy is expended from our metabolic rate. Around 60-70% to 70 of our daily energy expenditure is just from the body conducting essential functions throughout the day and night. Then we have around 25% of our energy expenditure that comes from movement. This includes all movements like fidgeting, walking and intentional exercise. And lastly, there is a small amount of energy, around 10% or so, that is expended from eating and storing food. These individual variables aren't that important. What is more important is knowing how much total amount of calories are required for an individual on a daily basis. So how do we find this out? There are many calculators out there that give a rough estimate as to how much you should eat per day, but they are all estimates based on averages. This may get you into a rough ballpark of where you need to be, but it won't be individualized to your specific physiology. The best way to get an idea of how many calories you need to eat is to simply weigh yourself regularly. If your weight is consistent over time, then you are probably eating enough to maintain your weight. If you are losing weight over time, then you are probably eating in a calorie deficit. And if you aren't gaining weight over time, then you are probably eating in a caloric surplus. This leads us to the idea of muscle growth versus fat loss. Muscle growth is best achieved by being in a caloric surplus, while fat loss is best achieved by being in a caloric deficit. Because we cannot be in both a surplus and a deficit at the same time, we cannot maximize rates of muscle growth and fat loss at the same time. Therefore, it may be best to periodize our caloric intake based on our current goals. So we may have periods where our goal is to gain as much muscle as possible, which means that we should probably be in a caloric surplus. This will result in slow muscle growth and inevitably fat gain too. Then when we want to prioritize fat loss, we can eat in a caloric deficit and try to maintain all the new muscle mass that we have built. Staying at a maintenance calories can be implemented when we simply want to maintain our current body composition while gaining very small amounts of muscle mass. The next nutritional factor for body composition is macronutrients. Macronutrients are what type of calories we eat. The three macronutrients are protein, carbohydrates and fat. So all calories we eat are composed of some combination of these three macronutrients. Let's go through some quick examples of food to understand this. First, we have a high protein, low fat yogurt. As we can see here, the total calories per 100 grams are 79 with a macronutrient breakdown of 8.6 grams of protein, 10.6 grams of carbohydrate and 0.2 grams of fat. Another example here is pasta. 
Plain pasta has 363 calories per 100 grams, 12.5 grams of protein, 71.2 grams of carbohydrates, and 2 grams of fat. And for avocado, it has 160 calories per 100 grams, 2 grams of protein, 9 grams of carbohydrates, and 15 grams of fat. So every food has a different amount of each macronutrient. Protein is probably the most important macronutrient for body composition. Protein is the actual building blocks of muscle. Trainees should try to get around 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. For example, an 80 kilo male should intake between 120 and 160 grams of protein per day. The total daily amount of protein that is ingested per day is more important than how it is distributed throughout each meal. Good sources of protein include chicken, red meat, low-fat dairy products, eggs, and protein powders. Next, we have fat. Fat is not so important for body composition directly, although we need a minimum amount of fat each day for essential bodily functions and health. A good general rule is to consume no less than 20 grams of fat per 1,000 calories of food. We also probably don't want to consume extremely high levels of fat, as this will take away from the amount of protein and carbohydrates we can eat. And lastly, we have carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is our primary source of fuel for high intensity exercise. So we need a good amount of carbohydrate per day to fuel our exercise, otherwise our performance will be reduced. For endurance athletes, this is of extremely high importance because they require large amounts of carbohydrate for their sport. Although for trainees performing resistance training, carbohydrate stores will almost never limit lifting performance. Therefore, the exact carbohydrate intake for body composition doesn't really matter too much, as long as it is not so low that it limits performance. If you abide by the rough protein and fat intakes, then the rest of calories can just come from carbohydrate, and there should be no issues. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.